Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Movie Social. I'm your host, Ricky, and today we're going to be talking about episode two of season three for The Shy on Showtime that comes on at 9 p.m. Whew, what episode that was. So, it starts off basically with Kevin not seeing his sister, Keisha, yet again. Now it must be coming the second day that she's gone missing. We come to find out that, okay, Kevin and Keisha's mom has come back from her honeymoon stay. Stay honeymoon, whatever you want to call it. And still, they have not yet reported her missing or anything like that. Kevin has no clue really where she is at this point. He's trying to find out where she's at. His mom's starting to get a little worried. He is definitely worried. And then we tra travel to the other homes in this uh, episode where Emmett's trying to find his way and navigate a proper way of getting his catering service off the ground properly while Tiff's still doing Tiff, I guess. Wasn't really doing too much. But given uh, Emmett's mom, Jada, some advice, she already took her uh, Tiff's previous advice of trying to speed dating, which we see in this episode, really was not that good at all. Wow. She kind of really went off and uh, basically felt kind of awkward in a way, going rambling on, talking about her kids, grandkids, I should say. Really showing her age compared to everybody else there, which really should have been a problem, the fact, except for the fact that almost everybody is about 10 years younger than her. But then we see Tiff giving her some more advice of trying this massage guy, which, whew, which we do find out, uh, turns out to be somebody that Emmett actually went to school with, and now he's, uh, having sex with his mom. Yeah, that didn't work too well. It was kind of funny, but kind of, like, ouch, at the same time. But... Going back to the uh, whole Keisha and going missing and the Kevin thing. So, during this episode, of course, they flipping back and forth between that and everybody, uh, all the other characters because you can't just focus on one for the whole thing. But, of course, that also interacts with other characters in the process. So, at the same time, Ronnie's going around. We're really picking up more into Ronnie's state as we get into Season 3. He's now homeless. He even admits to it. He shows his friends where he's staying. We actually first get a glimpse of him for the first time in this episode, digging through the trash for cans and other items to recycle, which he then turns in for some cash, which is crazy. He has an opportunity to be able to possibly be off the streets if he starts to sleep with the one of the people that's, uh, I guess, doing recycling for uh, exchange for the cash. But, you know, he doesn't take it, which is kind of interesting. Maybe they might be exploring that a little bit later. But, yeah, as of right now, he's homeless, which in a way kind of plays a good part into what happens with Keisha's new stepmother. When uh, they go, when she, when Kevin finally explains that, yeah, she's been missing since Sunday. It's now been three days that she's been missing. You basically, parent Kevin and uh, Keisha's mom now has the cops involved after going to the school, find out she hasn't been in school and been skipping school quite a bit too as well. Kevin also gets some information that she now has another boyfriend who's possibly with one of the gangs and might be at the trap house where he stays, but don't know for sure yet. We do explore that a little bit and towards the end of the episode, but to take another sidetrack as they do in the episodes, we get to explore Jake's situation with Duda, living with Duda. Just as a word of caution, if you're going to visit Duda's house, take your shoes off. I mean, he doesn't hit Jake or anything, but 
Yeah, the verbal abuse is just enough as it is for Jake, if you ask me. Marcus has had it rough growing up, mother issues. We learn more about his father, how things didn't pan out for him after everything happened. He took off and left, which is kind of a sad story in itself, but man, all these shows and uh, movies lately, broken homes. Ouch. Gotta fix that. Especially in the black community. But yeah, it explores a lot more into their past, goes in, explains a little bit more about his older brother and how things came to be with Reg and how, what happened with the older brother, why he wasn't around as much and everything with the father. But it kind of made a sad story for Jake's life, even sadder. But we do know they eventually do meet each other. Jake really doesn't want him out of his life, but he wants, as he says, baby steps. I'm not gonna live with you right away, but we're gonna take baby steps. But in turn, also, we get a little bit further into the backstory too of his older brother, who's also dealing with his own issues, personally with uh, accepting the fact of who he's dating, that she is um, possibly transitioned. At least that's what it alluded to, but we'll see how things go, how things play out, if they, which I think they will divulge deeper into his background and his love interest, which I'm um, guessing is probably a very interesting story with all of that as well. But then we get back into the whole thing with Keisha. So they start using the Find My Phone. Which, I don't understand why nobody ever starts with that. We're in 2020 modern technology. Almost everything's trackable at this day and age. But yeah, so they track it down to, lo and behold, not too far from the bus stop, but a old, I guess, underpass where the homeless people are staying. And who's there? Ronnie himself. And of course, the stepmom recognizes uh, that it's Ronnie, knows who he is confronts him about everything. He admits that he did see her at the bus stop, but it wasn't until uh, that Sunday. That was the last time we seen her. He said he didn't know for sure if, he, if she got on the bus or not. Then she questions about the phone. He goes to the, per the homeless man who's collecting cell phones, finds the phone, of course it's beat up, banged up. It actually looks even worse than when we seen it on uh, episode one. They report back more information to the cops, so now it's really looking ugly at this point. They don't really show too much further into that episode, into that portion of it, but then they flash back to, uh, well not back, but go back to Kevin and Papa and Jake, who are now about to go confront this uh, dealer, or possibly her boyfriend, whatever you want to call him. Whew, that got heated. And then escalated it very quickly. Kevin gets a gun pointed in his face when he refuses to leave. Papa's shaking in his boots. And we cut the episode at that point. Eh, a lot happened. And uh, I know I didn't forget. Emmett goes on and uh, at the same time of all these things happening, Emmett has a uh, epiphany when he's eating a piece of food that his mom worked for uh, Tiff, whatever that little exchange is. But turns out the person is cooking out of her home. And of course the person is our new character that came into the scene, played by La La. Who actually had a nice interesting idea going on. Dangerous, but interesting. Had a makeshift restaurant in her home, set, which was kind of odd. It was enough space for people to still move around there before set tables where it's four people to a table it looked like but she's doing her thing cooking making meals he persuades her to go to business with him to cook with him but he tells her to meet her at this location turns out it's his old place his old working place but they plan to do things after hours after the shop is closed up cook from there which we're gonna have to see how that turns out later on one I got a lot of questions on that area itself, but that's neither here nor there for the moment. But it looks very interesting. Like uh, we're gonna have a nice, well thought out season, 
yet again. We have to see how everything goes. Will they find Keisha alive or dead? Will they find her at all? I don't know. What's going to happen to Kevin? Jake and uh, Papa with his gun pointing in Kevin's face. And will Emmett keep it in his pants this time around? And will he st stay faithful to Tiff? Don't know. Will they uh, get busted or was this worked out? Or, no, nah, don't know. I'm hoping he's found his way, properly got things agreed upon for using the shop at night and he's not sneaking behind anyone's back. Cause that's just gonna bite him in the ass more so later down the line. But we'll have to wait and see. I don't know guys, what did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what we're doing. And give me a thumbs up if you like it. Until next time everybody.